let's try to edit a product. Let's change the in stock. Notice that total stock has been updated every time either the price or the in stock field values change. Let's add an 11th product for the supplier. Notice that it displays our custom error message. Let's see what it will take to implement these calculations. Let's create a sample Northwind app to allow users to manage our products, categories, and suppliers. In the app generator, let's create a new app. Go ahead and press create. Let's press next and connect to our database. Let's create a database. Insert the Northwind sample tables. Add the standard membership tables. Now that our database is configured, press OK. And let's set up the models. Let's create a model for products. Sort by product name. Let's move the discontinued field right after product name. Let's add the country and phone from suppliers. Let's go ahead and rename a few fields. Let's change unit price to price, units in stock to in stock, and units on order to just on order. Let's add a calculated field as well. Let's call this field total stock. This field will be calculated by multiplying the unit price by the units in stock. Let's place total stock after discontinued. Go ahead and save the model. Next, let's create a model for categories. Sort by category name and save the model. Finally, let's add a model for suppliers. Sort by company name, and let's remove the home page field. Go ahead and save the model. Let's proceed to generate the application. Set the app name. Our application has started in the browser. Let's go ahead and log in. We now have access to all the pages. Notice that all the changes we have made to the model is displayed in the grid. Discontinued is the second field. Total stock is the third field calculated from the price and in stock fields. Let's try editing a record. Using the view selector in the top left corner of the view, enable inline editing. 
The same menu can be accessed on smaller devices using the contacts menu in the top right corner and pressing the products button. To begin, double click on the in stock field. Let's add 10 to the current stock. Notice that total stock does not become updated until we save the record. Let's add a business rule that will run when the values of the field's price or in stock change and recalculate the total stock. Switch back to the app generator, click on the project name, and press design. Switch to the controllers tab. Expand the products controller, expand fields, double click on unit price, enable the box next to changing the field value causes calculate command to execute, and save the field. Make the same change to the in stock field. Let's add a business rule that will run when the calculate command is executed when the user changes these two fields. Right click on the business rules node and select new business rule. This SQL business rule will run during the phase calculate. This, this rule will set the total stock field equal to the price multiplied by in stock. Go ahead and save the rule. Note that we also have the option of using a JavaScript business rule instead. This will not require a round trip to the server and will also work in offline mode. Let's see our changes in the generic native app. On the toolbar, press Exit. Press Settings. And select Client and Server. Switch the client to Generic App. Press Finish. And press Generate. We will need to sign in. Let's try to edit a product. Let's change the in stock. Notice that total stock has been updated every time either the price or the in stock field values change. Switch to the suppliers page. The next thing we would like to do is show a list of products underneath the suppliers form. We will also add a business rule restriction that will prevent any users without the role of admin from inserting more than 10 products for each supplier. Switch back to the app generator and open the project designer. Switch to the controllers tab Right-click on the Products controller and press Copy. Right-click on Suppliers and press Paste. This has created a field of type Data View. The field is configured to display the controller products with the view grid 1 filtered by the Supplier ID field. Let's bind this to the edit form of Suppliers. Expand Views. And edit form 1. Let's drag this field into position. 
place it before the address field. We'll need to add one more business rule to the products controller. Right click on the business rules node under products and press new business rule. This time we will create a SQL business rule that fires before the insert command. Let's declare a variable here called product count. We will then update the value of this variable to be a count of the products where the supplier ID is equal to the current product supplier ID. Next, we'll create an if statement to check if the number is equal to or greater than 10. We will also check to see if the user has the role administrators. We will take the property business rules user roles, which is a comma separated list of roles, split it by a comma, and try to select the row where the value is equal to administrators. This will check to see if, if the administrator's role is applied to the current user. If both these conditions match, then we will do the following. We will prevent the insert operation from continuing. We will set, then set the result underscore error property equal to a message we will display to the user. Go ahead and save the new business rule. see this business rule in action. Navigate to the suppliers page. Let's open a supplier. Notice that a list of products is now displayed on the supplier form. Let's go ahead and test our business rule by signing in with the user account. Let's find the Pavlova supplier. This supplier has nine products. According to the business rule we created, we'll be able to add one more product. So let's add this product. Press save. The product has been inserted successfully. Let's add an 11th product. Notice that it displays our custom error message.